When I was seven years old, a mad sage told me to seek wisdom. He was a known bedlamite who roamed the streets of my hometown, one who addressed God with bitter and harsh words, flinging his clenched fists passionately against the sky. Children used to run after him only to flee as he turned to them. I used to wait for him by the water fountain of the school, where I knew he would come to quench his thirst. Uh, turn the faucet for me, will you please? He said calmly, all hint of his raving rage completely gone. As I turned the water tap and watched the fresh stream break free, I heard him say, you should seek wisdom like I do. I veered, only to see him kneel down in front of the spigot, his eyes shut, groping for water with his toothless mouth. He never spoke to me again. Yet I am still seeking. I'm riding on a merry-go-round, only you couldn't tell it is but the carousel, anchored to one place, twirling and turning, yet always staying at the same harboured locale. It is so enormous, it looks as if it is the whole wide world, a world where time and space never meet. There are bizarre animals, instruments, lively strange automata and memorabilia from an uncertain future alongside some t-shirts from a rather frustrating and punishing past. Holding on to a violoncello, I can see Johann Sebastian Bach marching to pay a visit to Dietrich Buxtehude, who has just reinstated the tradition of Abendmusiken to find a bridegroom for his ugly daughter. What is the wisdom of music, I called? <laughs> he started laughing and nodding his head. He was on his way again. But I decided to follow him. He was visibly out of sorts. He has been marching for over ten days, writing music on the back of one of his servants. He also pushes a huge music case made of the finest porcelain. It was almost transparent and I could see paraphernalia of musical instruments. He doesn't have time to lose over idle questions, so he emits over his shoulder, just put your fingers and music will gladly serve you. It hates to be imprisoned. So has ever been is being again. Everywhere is here and nowhere is all around. Winds and sounds are sucked back into oblivion. All is remembered and forgetfulness is cast into Lethe. Bleached streets are washed in scorching sun rays. We are in Athens. Yesteryears are blowing down dusty roads and the animals on the uh, merry-go-round look tired and restless. Suddenly, the almost empty streets fill with a group of youngsters who flock after a mocking satire. He's short, mightily built, and carries himself with an almost threatening gait. Teach us, master, screams the heated crowd. I know nothing. How can I teach? I am but a midwife. Like my mother was before me, I know all about delivering ideas and rubbing shoulders with wisdom. But I myself, I possess none. Like all midwives, I myself am barren. Off you go, people. Come back when you're pregnant with wisdom. I am the gadfly, says the shapeless devil. 
but I suspect that you are in pain because you are pregnant but know not with what I can help though if when I have examined and verified that which you bear and should I think it is but a mirage and not real and should I therefore quietly take it away from you and throw it out do not be angry as women are when they are deprived of their first offspring if it is stillborn let me ask you why why should anything exist which brings no joy why should the thought persist if it aspires to no inner wholesomeness life to he who can serve it well and may all other perish is that so? Is that so? Come on, tell me. Is that so? For a long time after he disappeared, I could still hear his thrilling voice, his enticing challenges, and his interminable questions. I can hear them now. Young Toto swings on a perfect leaning campanile. Dante and Boccaccio are jotting down everything he says. He's a dwarf. His ill-proportioned head is tilted back a bit, as if he tries to take measure of everything around and above him. Is there wisdom in art? I ask. <laughs> Dante and Boccaccio look at me disdainfully. What a foolish thing to say. Dotto, though, is a nonplussed. He grabs a piece of parchment from an oversized bag, sketches something hastily, and sticks it into my fist. Look at it! He screeches in a high-pitched voice. I scroll open the goatskin and discover a perfect likeness of myself. I swat absentmindedly at a fly on my forehead only to realize that the fly is actually in the sketch. <laughs> Jotter's laughter rings out in his words. Don't worry. Even the great Chimabue fell for the same trick. Art is here to trick you. Art's wisdom is heralding the truth which lies hidden in your comfortable lies. But is art beauty? I insist. Of course not! It's like children, conceived in the dark and born in and to pain. The whirling of the carousel hates me. When I open my eyes, I can see a paved street in Turin. A beautiful coach with a horse is clip-clapping on the pavement. The coachman whips his proud horse. A mustachy old man jumps and hangs himself sobbingly against the beast's neck. Aquas tries desperately to free itself from that weeping Adam yet in vain. The Carabinieri Reali struggle to free the quadrupede and they realize that the mustachy old gentleman is foaming at the mouth. He's delirious. As they fight him off the horse, he shrilly exclaims, Das Überpferd is besser as der Übermensch. Das 
Übelpferd ist besser als der Übermensch. Das Überpferd ist besser als der Übermensch. From another corner, I seem to hear the harsh words of that lunatic prophet from my youth, mingled in perfect harmony with the voice of Ecclesiastes. All the rivers run to the sea, yet the sea is not full. All the river runs to the sea, yet the sea is not full. The wind goes towards the south and veers to the north. Round and round goes the wind, and on its circuits the wind returns. Round and round goes the wind, and on its circuits the winds return. Round and round goes the wind. Circuits, the wind return. I'm thrown off the merry-go-round. I have no valid visa, no money, no paper, no other appropriate means of barter. And so, I came to found Yasofya. Thank you.